Hello everyone, thanks for joining. Hope you're having a good evening, night, morning, whatever time it is. Right now we're gonna be looking at gradient descent. And I think to really understand, you know, why we were interested in gradient descent and why it's kind of commonly used is I think to understand, take a step back and look at, you know, even the most complicated, these, these very complicated models like neural networks. And to be able to see that there's actually theorems, it's called the universal approximator theorem, and essentially saying that, you know, a neural network of a sufficient size and depth, or how many layers, how many, you know, different layers it has and how many nodes it has, um, can learn any real function. Um, and this is true. Well, I mean, it's a theorem, so I guess it hasn't necessarily been proved yet, but really I think what's important is, is yes, while these neural networks can learn, like, you know, a really, really wide range of models, um, it, this model, you know, says nothing really about how to get to that model. And I think machine learning is honestly a lot about getting to that model because these, these models that we're using are so powerful and have so many parameters that, you know, they have this such a great, great freedom to represent very, very complex and really powerful functions. Uh, but there is a difficulty in actually trying to figure out what that function is based on some finite training data, essentially, right? And so this idea is that now we need to and I think it's this contrast because like maybe in statistics, if you come from a statistics background or sorry, like maybe epidemiology or something like that, you're used to solving more closed form kind of solutions. Um, and maybe if you had done like Bayesian interpretations, you might have done things like uh, Gibbs sampling. Um, but and that's a little bit more closer, like, you know, using approximation methods. But the idea is that, you know, these these kind of networks, you can't just solve them uh, in a closed form formula all the time. And so this idea is that now we can actually learn, um, you know, try to approximate uh, different uh, functions for this based on their derivatives and change the weights of these models based on successive derivatives. That's how one way that we can actually use to train. So that's essentially uh, why we need to figure out how to actually train these models. Um, so let's talk about one way that they actually do use to train these models. And it's called gradient descent. So gradient descent is one of those things that, you know, sounds really, really complicated, but I think if you just have a fundamental grasp of, of some basic calculus, um, you can kind of really understand, you know, really intuitively what this is really trying to do. And so the idea is, well, the first thing you need to do is essentially say, um, so recall before, it was like, we need to define how we're gonna learn this function. We, we, so we know neural networks, so we actually need to define what our loss is, what our error would be, what, what is our objective, what's the point? So are we doing some kind of regression? So do we wanna predict a number essentially? Or do we, are we trying to predict a class? If, if we see an image, do we wanna predict a certain class or something like that? And so the idea is we define some given function, which can be like a mean squared error, just the difference between a y and a predicted y, or you know, cross entropy, which is essentially the same thing, but for categorical data. Um, but the idea is that essentially we can take the derivative of these functions, which we're actually gonna go into derivations of both of these, uh, going to cross that entropy at the very end, uh, but we're gonna go more into detail in the mean squared error derivation right now. Um, and so we'll to, we're, we're pretty much gonna find the gradient or derivative of each of these uh, points at each of these while we're training this, and then uh, we can actually improve the weights based on the derivative, based on the gradient. So essentially, now that we actually, we define a loss, and then at every time point, we just, uh, we check how we can change the weight. We actually do change the weight to improve the loss. We do change the weight, which improves the loss, or some, which should improve the loss. We kind of do this using partial derivatives. That's why it, it kind of depends on each uh, variable independently. Uh, but then we, we successfully tune. And so this is the kind of way you can actually use this to chain many layers of neural networks together. So this is why it's kind of commonly used, or the base, very similar methods are used uh, for training neural networks. So we're gonna show how we can just do this using a linear regression, uh, kind of more basic formula right now. We're gonna go into a little bit more math. So the basic two-step process of you of the gradient and the descent part is essentially you find the change of your loss function with respect to your weight. That's the kind of gradient part. And then you adjust those weights based on derivative. So let's take a look at how the math actually works out. All right, so this code is just uh, some code that I was able to gather from different sources. I'm essentially you're just going to try kind of demonstrate uh, really what's going behind the hood when you do a linear regression and kind of gradient descent um, and how it kind of works to really train these models. And so this first line is actually just training a linear regression model or just, just generating data according to a linear regression model with some added noise. Uh, so we're just gonna generate some linear data with some noise um, and we're gonna try to learn this regression essentially from scratch. Um, and so instead of solving this all out, which we actually could do for the linear regression because it actually is solvable, but not like a, a lot of other problems that are, you know, closed form solvable. Uh, so we'll actually, we need to approximate this. And so um, our, we're going to try to approximate this and the other, other uh, functions will actually have to approximate because there's no other way. We can't solve it closed form.
And so this is our loss function, like what we're talking about is called the mean squared error function. And essentially it's the mean because we're essentially dividing by the number of samples. We add up every sample, so the sigma means just adding up every single sample um, between for, for every y. We have some predicted value for that y and we have the actual label um, and the actual number. And so we just subtract the, the number minus that predicted y um, and then we square each point to make sure we're not adding negatives and positives together. We just add a bunch of positives and that's our measure of our error. And so uh, basically if we can figure out how to take the derivative of this, and again we can expand this out, so let's just assume we're going to assume that we just have this, this very simple y equals mx plus b linear regression, right? Um, and so we're going to expand this out here, um, and then we can actually calculate uh, these these functions. And so um, if we if we take the derivative here, which I've done here, so if you if you look at the derivative, uh, you essentially can. Um, and if you just look, kind of like to solve this out, I'm not going to go over this quick, but if you can, you can uh, follow along with me. But basically, the 2 would come down. That's where this negative 2 comes from, or the 2 comes from. The negative comes from you distributing this minus and then keeping in mind that this was the chain rule. So that 2 came down, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to each of the parameters. So there are two parameters here. There's a B and an M. We're doing, remember, Y equals MX plus B. So we have to learn a B and an M. And so we take the derivative of our loss, which we define here, you know, the difference between the label and whatever B plus MX is for every point, sum them up, um, and then take this derivative. And then, so yeah, if you do this all out, and then this X out comes out for when you do the M because of the chain rule, um, this distributes this negative MX, so then the derivative comes out with respect to M, you have the X. Um, so this is these idea of partial derivatives that we're using. So these are essentially representing how we can change the loss or how the loss changes uh, with respect to each of our points. And so now that we actually know this, um, we can essentially make a really small step in this direction. Uh, we can essentially just add that our old weight at time, you know, the previous time point, i, and then the next we could say, well, let's try this again. Let's take the derivative of all these points and calculate it all for all these points again. But it, what we're actually going to use uh, the next one. So we're, we're going to actually, uh, we're going to modify our, weight, our previous weight by the derivative, which I remember was, was how we could change the loss. So, so theoretically, this is supposed to, um, you know, improve, improve the loss. And you'll see there's actually some problems, and, and I'm not going to go too much into detail, but I highly recommend you, you continue looking into uh, gradient descent. This is really just an introduction, but there's a lot of requirements on your loss function, uh, like that it does have to be derivable to do stochastic gradient descent because you have to take these derivatives, but there also has to be a minimum. It has to keep on going down. It has to be minimizable, um, or, or convex, really. Um, and so the, this idea is um, we're essentially, again, we define our loss function here, and then we actually... Um, take the derivative with respect to our weights, that essentially tells us what we need to add to our previous weights to fix the weights to be updated, essentially. And we can keep on repeating this process until we converge and we don't get uh, any more loss. And this actually works pretty well as we're gonna demonstrate right now. So I've run the code and basically uh, what we have here is we have a single iteration. Uh, so all we did, we started at zero for both B and M and we're trying, and we found out that we should go up a little bit. So you can see it's just kind of going up a little bit. Um, but if we do this for 10 times, so every single time it'll calculate the loss and then it'll calculate how it should change B and M. And, and so it's kind of, it, it seems kind of dumb to do this in, in this two dimensional space, but you can kind of think about, or two, two parameters. But if you think about it, if you have a lot of parameters, it actually becomes really useful because you can update these independently essentially. Um, and then you can find out the derivative with respect to the loss with each of these independently. Eventually, yeah, you, you essentially get whatever the best model converges to the least scarce solution if you do this enough uh, and you have a certain learning rate. Um, and so this idea is, yeah, so you essentially take these, um, you know, you, you can usually add this alpha, which is a learnable parameter. You would have to figure out what the best alpha is based on a validation set. Um, but this would multiply by your derivative by before you multiply, you subtract your weight uh, so that you don't, because essentially, if you think about it, the derivative just has the direction information. Essentially, if you, it's just the direction that you need to improve. Um, and so you change alpha, which is how much you want to actually learn. It's how much you basically uh, you want to learn. Basically, if you learn too much, you might you know, never, you might be really wild and never, you know, converge on a minimum. If you, if you have your alpha too slow or too low, you're going to be, uh, it's going to take a really long time to train. It's not going to be a very good time. So next, I'm just going to talk about two uh, common terms that you might see in terms of uh, gradient descent training, the st stochastic. Um, so that refers to training one sample at a time. So essentially, you check the loss after for every sample, and you update the weights for every sample. Um, but batch gradient 
uh, you actually, you know, update and, and check it for a batch of the samples. And you could also just do it for the entire samples. Um, these are just different terms. And there's kind of benefits and drawbacks to doing each of these uh, based on speed, really, and accuracy. Um, and so next I'm going to actually go into, this is going to be a lot more complicated. I feel if you're not really um, interested in the derivation of the logistic regression cross entropy loss, uh, I would honestly not just skip this. It's a lot of boring math. But if you are, this definitely came to the right place. So this is an L2 regularized um, cross entropy loss formula and essentially for the logistic regression we, we can write it like this and then we find our prediction our p of xi um, basically like this here and the idea is we're essentially just going to try to take this derivative in two steps uh, so we're, we're going to take the first derivative and we're essentially going to just of p of x and then we're going to say of, of our weight vector wk uh, we're going to take this derivative, so you can just kind of work this out with W, um, you know, the, the derivative of 1 over this, and then this is, becomes 2 on the bottom. The chain rule kind of multiplies this out. Um, and then, yeah, you do this kind of trick, and that's what I call it, and some people don't like when I call it a trick, but I think it's, I think it's kind of just a tricky little thing. You just essentially add and subtract 1 to both numerator and denominator, and that lets you kind of rewrite it in a nicer way. And so this actually, so now you do this so you can actually get uh, from the derivative of p of, of k, which is again your probability that you defined before, uh, you can actually get your um, you know original p k uh, out of that. And so then you actually go on, and you just say so you can actually put this uh, since you have this this derivation here, you can actually just take these kind of derivatives out. Uh, we can leave this p of x because we know what the derivative of p of x is. We'll take the everything derivative of everything else. We know the derivative of ln of p of x is just going to be one over that. 1 over p of x times the derivative of p of x with respect to k. That's the chain rule, so that we already know that part. Um, essentially the same thing for over here. Uh, we just take these derivatives out. Uh, this last part, you know, the 2 just comes down for the regularization term. Um, there's, it just kind of depends on this. That's kind of how you just do it. Um, and then, yeah, so then you once you just kind of do it, I think the key really is, again, just doing it at p of x, and then you would also do it uh, with respect to the, the rest of everything. Um, and so you just kind of keep working it out um, and then you just combine all the terms and then this is just kind of simple math stuff cancels out and you actually get this kind of pretty nice uh, closed form approximation. Um, and so this or, you know, this is the approximation that you would use to actually find your logistic regression weights. Um, and then so each of these weights for WK would be the, the previous, uh, the new WK here is going to be a function where you uh, take this, you multiply by your alpha and your, your step size and by that derivative, uh, which we found here. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And to my subscribers, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. You guys know. I know you know because you know, you're watching all my videos. You know how that when you subscribe, you help that YouTube algorithm actually use stochastic gradient descent. Because if you don't actually have any data point for that, since if you if you were to not subscribe, uh, the, the coefficients would shrink just essentially just shrink to zero because you have regularization effects. So you would really help me out, help that regularization out if you learn anything out, anything from this video. Please give me that subscribe, like, uh, put anything in the comments if you want me to go over anything, having questions. See you later. Have a good time. Bye.